everyone. Thank you for joining our conversation with Karina. Today, Karina and I are joined by two of our colleagues, Richard Allchild, Senior Sales Manager, and Mark Mulligan, Operations Director. Welcome to both of you. When we launched our 12 commitments for 2021 earlier this year, recovery was at the top of our list. The phrase build back better has been discussed often within the IMAX team. Building our industry back, expanding our team and making it stronger, and most importantly for us right now, building back face-to-face. -face. As we travel down the road to Mandalay Bay, we're focused on purposeful recovery. But what does that mean to IMEX and to the industry? Karina, let's start with you. It's been a big year for the IMEX team. Could you talk a little bit about how we brought the idea of purposeful recovery to our day-to-day -day work? Yeah, I think obviously, you know, the whole industry has had um, a significant pause uh, for the IMEX team. I don't think it feels like a pause because we've been so busy with Planet IMEX and then now uh, this year focusing on rebuilding towards IMEX America in November, IMEX Frankfurt next April, and of course the digital activations that we've just launched, the IMEX Buzz Hub. So we haven't really paused in terms of the level of activity and work that we've been doing. But, but having the pause from the shows has allowed us to really think about everything that we do at the shows. And when we sort of restart looking at going back to live, in a way, it's quite freeing to say, well, how can we do things differently and better? I think we've always had a culture of re-looking at every element, you know, our debrief, we always went through the big through to the very small things to see what we could do better. But when you actually stop, it allows you to really think about that in a whole different way. I think the purposeful aspect is really a recognition of the fact that unless you really do think about it and put effort into it and are purposeful about that element, um, it doesn't just happen because it's too easy to just spin up what you've done before. And as event planners, I think in every aspect of what we do, whether we're looking at the flow of the show, whether we're looking at sustainability, whether we're looking at... Um, you know, how our buyers and our exhibitors interact with each other. Every element has to be thought through and, and, and we have to say, does that still work in the new environment? And in many places, we'll say, yeah, that, that worked before and it will work again. But in other areas, we can really take some time to think through how we do it better. And I think this pause has given us an opportunity to really delve deeper into some of the things we were talking about already, like need finding and way finding and different technologies. We won't have all the answers for November, but we'll be significantly further forward probably than we might have been um, without that pause. Absolutely. I think um, as a team, I feel like I've actually almost been in a show cycle consistently for the past year and a half, even though our shows have been very different to what live used to look like. So I definitely think we've tried to take this time and really learn and research and spend the time with our attendees to see really what they need. Because I think something that's really important for us is that we're in the same exact position as all of the attendees to the show, whether they're suppliers or planners, we're literally doing exactly what they're doing every day. So it's been really interesting to kind of look at it from that side where we are all in this together. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with that. It's been, you know, suddenly we are a, a corporate planner, an association planner in a way that we weren't necessarily their direct peer for uh, because we were very specifically a trade show organizer in the digital world all of that goes away so it, it has been um great actually because i think we understand them better and perhaps they understand us better absolutely and um, mark as our operations director you've been part of many wider industry conversations around what's next in safety and security which obviously is the top of everyone's mind right now how have you seen the industry come together for purposeful recovery yeah, I think it's been uh, quite remarkable, actually, the, the level of collaboration um, across the industry as we've been dealing with this, this pandemic. Um, earlier this year, we saw a trio of, of normally competitive fashion events uh, in Florida coming together to, um, to work together and to put on a successful show and, and show this industry that we can do it and we're ready. So um you know they've been very vocal and open and sharing their experiences and best practices for other organizers and associations for us to learn from so i think that's a great example 
Um, of course, the, the task forces and committees that um, already existed uh, have really taken a new focus, I think, around the COVID issue. Um, and we've learned a great deal from that. My team, the operations team, has, has joined many, many meetings, roundtables um, and committees uh, just to learn from each other. And it's been really, really valuable. And, and we've made some long lasting connections from it. And then I think um, the other thing that's been really interesting is we've made direct contact with other organizers. Um, so we're, we're talking now to several other organizers of US shows, Las Vegas shows, uh, so we can compare notes and we can talk about what challenges we're facing, which are the big decisions, which route are they taking, which route are we taking. Um, so it's really demonstrated how resilient and determined we are for this community to get back to business. It's really been a nice, a nice experience. Absolutely. I think um, to quote High School Musical, we're all in this together. And I think it's been incredible to see the collaboration that's happening in the industry. And I do think it really speaks to the commitment that we all have of getting global business events back on its feet as quickly as possible. So Richard, obviously you are on the ground as an a one member of our sales team. You are with our exhibitors, talking to our exhibitors every day. So can you talk a little bit about what they're going through right now and maybe share some examples of what they've been doing to build back better within their communities? Yeah, I mean, as, as Mark said, I believe, I mean, one of the lasting legacies of COVID will definitely be collaboration within the communities. So like in some destinations, communities, they completely rely on the travel and the meetings and events industry. So for example, in Los Cabos, 90% of their population rely on tourism. So what they've done is they've um, created a strong public private uh, collaboration between the hotels, airport, local health authorities. And what this has done is allowed everyone to provide like a higher standard of care and they've already allowed meetings to take place. They had a meeting of 700 people um, last month, and that's only been able to happen because of the collaboration um, between all of the stakeholders. I mean, before I mean before, before COVID, many of the CVBs and then and their communities were in conflict, either over over tourism or funding, and it was mainly due to a lack of understanding between the stakeholders. So what COVID has done is allow these people to form strong relationships and this will only benefit the, the community moving forward. And then I think one of the things that links everyone in our industry is their passion for the destination. And even in our hardest times, our industry is still looking to help those communities. So you've seen convention centers across the world becoming hospitals or COVID vaccination centers. And then you see like hotel chains like MGM donating 300,000 pounds of food, the Sands donating 2 million pieces of PPE in, in Las Vegas. So. I just think all of those initiatives are going to leave a legacy long after COVID. It's so fantastic. And it's it's just incredible to see those examples and to feel those examples of just really purposeful building back. And I think, you know, it, it raises the question, something that we're talking about a lot internally about kind of what's important to us and what do we need to move forward and, you know, in face-to-face -face live, live events. And I know Karina as a team, we're talking a lot right now about what we want to put back into the events after this pause. So what's at the top of the list for you right now? I think um, obviously, you know, safety and security uh, come come top of the list. But I think, you know, what we all have to do is really look at the events that we produce for INEX. You know, we have large scale trade shows and look at the purpose of those events as well. And I think that's really important to focus on as we build back, because you need to ensure that uh, you really understand why it is your stakeholders are attending your event and what it is that they need to get out of it before you strip things back. For us, of course, business is at the heart of what we do, F bringing people together face to face to make business and peer to peer connections. Um, and so that is really sacrosanct for us. And we need to make sure that when people come back to our event, that they can get that business done in the way that they expect to, because that is why they invest their money, but also their time in the show. Um, obviously, we also look at things like sustainability, and that's always been at the heart of IMEX shows. And for us moving to a new venue this year, uh, it's been also um, something that we've focused on. 
the other thing I think that's really important for us all to remember is that we create experiences and we need to make sure that when we're building back our events, yes, we can do things in a certain way, we can keep people apart, we can do things in a very safe and secure way, but, but that could also be sterile. So how do we keep things safe and secure, but also provide the amazing experience and atmosphere that um, people also come to our events for? And again, that's different depending on the event that you hold but I do think that it's really important to think about the experience you're creating and design that into your event so purposefully again des design that in or design that back in and don't forget about that element I think that's really important and finally I think the other thing that's been you know was building but it's been really highlighted in the last 18 months is diversity equity and inclusion and I think that's just so important again to really purposely fully think about how that ma can manifest itself, how you can really build that back into your event or, and into your organization and help your stakeholders, help your attendees, your exhibitors to really live that. I think that's going to be increasingly important um, to, to ensure that you are um, working to um, really expand the opportunities of your event. And that's what it, it, inclusion means to me. It's really allowing that opportunity for everybody to take part equally. Um, so I think that's also really important going forward. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I, I loved that you touched on show experience because obviously at IMEX, that is the most important thing for us. In fact, we've coined a term, the I'm experience, um, which is one of our fantastic hashtags that we often use on site. So Mark, I know that that's something your team is really focused on right now. Karina touched on it, how we, how we can plan a safe but not sterile event. So what can people expect from our first live show in almost two years? Yeah, two years. Wow. I can, I can hardly believe it. Um, but I, I think, I think the the uh, the big thing, of course, is that we're in a new a new venue uh, since the last show. Um, Mandalay Bay was super excited to welcome people to uh, to a new surroundings. I mean, planning a convention against the backdrop of a, a shark reef and a and a beach resort, and of course all the world class entertainment and hospitality that Mandalay Bay and MGM properties offer is is um, is going to be really interesting and exciting, and we hope. Uh, our guests will enjoy it, of course. In, in terms of the, the show and, and the safety aspect, of course, um, we are working very hard right now to make sure that we address all of those um, COVID compliance matters. Uh, the big thing, or one of the big things, will be we are planning on a seamless arrival experience, uh, which means uh, guests will be asked to print their own badges at home, uh, bring them along to the show, collect their lanyard and uh, scan themselves into the show. So there's a very seamless, contactless experience as they arrive to the show. Um, clearly, we will distribute our main feature areas so that we don't uh, create any unnecessary crowding or queuing, um, and we'll add additional points of access to the show for the same, for the same reason. So I'm not going to spill the beans on some of the uh, show experience um, ideas that we are working on at the moment. That's maybe for another issue. But I can tell you one hot off the press is a new CSR activity. Uh, we're working with a company called KLH, um, who we're going to be constructing a children's clubhouse live during show days, uh, which will be donated to a, a needy family in the Las Vegas area after the show and we're inviting our attendees to participate in that build um, and, and maybe a photo opportunity um, during the show. So do come along and help us with that. It's, it's a great, um, it's a great uh, initiative and we're, we're proud to be a part of it. So um, yeah, come along to the show and um, you'll see some of the other show experience ideas that we've got in the making. Thanks, Mark. That clubhouse sounds fantastic. Definitely include me. I will be signed up, ready to, to help with that build. That's definitely something you cannot do virtually. So um, it is definitely important to be there live. And, and talking about live and the value of live, which is obviously the most important thing to the IMEX team. You know, Richard, how are you articulating the value of live events in this, I hate to use the term, new normal, especially after people have experienced the good and the bad of digital? 
Um, I mean, well, I believe if, if anything, the value of live events has increased over the last year, year and a bit. I mean, when you speak to your colleagues within the industry or your friends, the one thing that they've missed the most is, is live events. Um, I mean, live events, they allow you to have that emotion, that shared experience that just can't be replicated online. Um, I mean, that's the reason why we all prefer to go to a music concert or to a sports event in live. I mean, you can watch the same thing at home, um, but it's just always better in person. And that's the same be it a conference or, or a trade show. Um, I just think in, uh, in person shared experiences just help build relationships and trust between two people or a brand. Uh, and meeting a person face to face is still the best way to do business and to form relationships. I mean, I think you, you can see, I mean, we've seen a massive shift to video conferencing because it gives you more benefits of face to face. So it's not quite there, but it's more. So we've all moved away from telephone calls to face to face over this time. But then when you know, live events and travel comes back, I see everyone moving, moving back to and to face to face just because it's for those connections that, that you can make it. And um, it's just better, better in that way. And I always look at it, you know, millions of people watch the Super Bowl on TV every year, but give one of those people a ticket to the game and we all know where they'd rather be. I love it. That makes so much sense. And I, I couldn't agree with that more. But, you know, obviously, as a business, we've tried to pivot to digital and I think we've done a great job. Um, but I know something a lot of people have been talking about recently, Karina, is, is how to make sure that you're maintaining brand trust.